in my airplay maybe no because it kind of suck if it's uh, managing website content um, social media and information systems and I'm also a very active social media user and pretty much 95% of my shopping these days is done online, not because of COVID, but just because of my preference and time availability. So I can, um, I can explain things from a consumer perspective as well as, um, you know, how systems work um, and processes and why uh, it's good for your business and how to implement it in your business. For those of you that have... Uh, joined my uh, social media presentations before I saw some of you have registered. I have tried to uh, make this one a little bit different. So hopefully it's a good refresher. I know some of you that joined this are probably a bit more advanced than um, others. And so I tried to sort of have a balance where those that know what they're doing to some extent will get something new out of this. And obviously we have to keep it simple enough for those that are totally unfamiliar to start understanding how all this works. So obviously there's intermediate level and advanced. Um, so you will know after this presentation whether it's um, you know, whether you are ready to move on to the intermediate, if a lot of what I'm saying is already kind of, you know, that's great, you've got a good foundation. If it's kind of going over your head and it's all a little bit too much, I think we can have a private chat further to see how we can assist. I'm suggesting we do smaller uh, group mentoring sessions, maybe five businesses all together to look at individual cases. Um, because this forum, there's too many of us at the moment to look at every single option and suggest strategies. So following this presentation, we welcome feedback if there's anything else you want to know in uh, future sessions. And also, if you are interested in uh, kind of strategic sessions as a group, we can um, talk about times for that. So, so of course, uh, today I'll be specifically looking at Instagram and Facebook, um, but particularly phone apps. Uh, the reason being is uh, Instagram is not so good on desktop computers. You can view it, but you can't really do much with it um, with very limited features. And Facebook on the desktop is a little bit more advanced and a little bit different to what is on uh, your phone. Um, but as traders, I also realize you're often at your shops um, and stalls, so it's very difficult to get a desktop computer out and start uh, updating your social media, so the focus is on purely phone apps. Um, we'll talk about why you would use these platforms, the benefits and the challenges, what type of marketing works best for various products, and we'll briefly look at it. Uh, content creation and some case studies if we have time. I tried to keep it brief, but it's sort of, you know, as you know, social media keeps expanding, evolving, and, you know, the beginner session is as big as the whole entire overview session used to be. So let's get started. Um, as I mentioned, yes, I think we will run how to step by step instruction sessions. So if you don't have social media set up or are not sure how to post, we can have private sessions for those that are interested in that to know where to click, to what to write, that type of thing, um, and uh, group st strategy sessions. So Facebook. So and Facebook's been very around for probably since 2006 now, and it's evolved over over that time substantially. So it started the same, uh, like as a means to connect and stay in touch with people and broadcast personal updates to your friends. So it was really a connection between universities, essentially, um, friends at universities. Now it's evolved into more of a media platform focusing on um, articles of interest, videos for amusement, um, very much targeted advertising to each user. Um, and now, unfortunately, there's very limited opportunity for free brand promotion. When Facebook first evolved, brands really enjoyed many benefits of being connected to their customers as a person. Now they uh, basically want you to pay to have any sort of engagement with your customers. So the focus on getting as many friends and followers on Facebook has really diminished over time. Um, so for on your phone, Facebook business pages are managed by a different app to your personal uh, Facebook page. So I'll give you an example of that in a moment. 
But basically, if you have a personal account, you use one app. If you have a business account you want to manage, you use another app. Um, you can also, um, on, a, on the desktop version, you can act as your business. So you can follow people, like things, um, be an individual but it's your business. Um, on the Facebook, uh, sorry, on the phone apps, it's not as easy. So I won't bore you with too much detail, but just keeping those limitations in mind. So Instagram is now owned by Facebook, but initially it started as an independent um, little software that was purely designed for editing images and sharing them. Um, basically the photos you took with your iPhone um, it's now evolved into content sharing platform, providing opportunity for brands to create a visual identity. This is the most important thing about uh, Instagram. It's, it's basically your visual personality of your business and your brand. Um, it enables you to easily attract followers as well as um, for individual people to become celebrities, which is a big trend that they called influencers. So, Previously, you had to be a movie star and a, you know, a singer or a model to be known. Now there is, you know, a bunch of unknown people that's to, to common folk, but they're super celebrities on Instagram making a lot of money in the millions, sometimes for endorsements. Um, and all they do is post videos and images of themselves uh, in various holidays or <laughs> promoting clothing or skincare or whatever it might be. Um, and you can easily reach celebrities as well. You know, people on Instagram are everything from Jacinta Ardern to the model, you know, I mentioned models and famous dogs and uh, you name it. Basically, you can reach your favorite celebrity via Instagram probably 99% of the time. Um, so... You can, uh, one of the good things with Instagram is that you can follow topics of interest um, using hashtags. I'll briefly touch on hashtags in this presentation, but we'll go in more depth into hashtags into the next uh, presentation. So on uh, Instagram, unlike Facebook business pages, accounts can be public or private. So you can, well, actually no, business page is always public, but your personal accounts can be public or private. So anyone can follow them or you can choose that people request that you follow them. So it just depends on how much you want to share about your information or, or how much you filter what you want to share. Uh, on Instagram as well, your business page is your own individual page. Um, so, uh, I mean, as you treat your business page as an individual. So it's its own person with its own login, um, and its own posts and things like that, completely separate to yours. Whereas Facebook, you connect to your business page through your personal account. So there's slight differences in managing those. Um, and as I said, it's Instagram is mainly an app with minimal desktop features. So it's that is a pro and a con. So why use these platforms? So overall on the right here, there's a lot of opportunities for growth. Uh, you know, businesses have basically started with nothing with no marketing budget and have managed to leverage these platforms to grow pretty quickly just because they're very clever in what they post and how they attract users. It's getting more of uh, well, clients or fans, whatever you want to call them. It's getting more and more difficult to do that, obviously for commercial reasons of these platforms, but also as you know, new trends come up all the time and sometimes even new platforms become more popular, but we're focusing on Instagram and Facebook for today because they're the main ones. So the, it's low initial investment to get started. Basically you need a phone and the internet and that's all you can create free accounts the it's low cost of operation however i've got an asterisk there it's low cost if you can do most of it yourself <laughs> if you can't then it can become expensive and how expensive is the question of how long is a piece of string so uh you know how, how you could spend you know thousands of dollars marketing and advertising on these platforms each day uh, obviously they help you build your company profile beyond your website uh, it helps customers stay connected with you. So rather than them 
saying, I want to see what my favorite business or my favorite clothing shop is doing and going to their website, you can actually subtly remind them that you are there frequently just by the post you're doing. Um, and of course, obviously, by staying connected in your customers, it's e with co your customers, it's always easier to get repeat business than attract and educate new customers. So nurturing people that want to follow you is a good way to get repeat business, hopefully. Fingers crossed. So the uh, why use Facebook? Um, it's, as I said, it's evolved. The focus on likes and fans has drastically reduced. So I suggest to now view it as a directory listing. So you, you should have it for your business, but whether you update it, it's, look, if you want to attract followers, yes, but you can just have it as a directory listing that briefly describes what you do with some pictures. So then if anyone finds you that way, they can see what your business is about. Infrequent posting is good because it can still, it shows that you're still in business. Obviously, you can spend a lot of time posting various things and trying to attract fans, but fundamentally as a directory listing, it's okay. Um, so I, I, obviously, it's okay to stay connected with your fans. Why I say it's okay now, because if you want to reach them and send the message to all your Facebook fans, you're now going to have to pay and you can't reach them individually so that's why my recommendation in all digital marketing strategies is always to build your email list again email is not what we're discussing in this presentation however it is a really really important um, asset to your business and I think maybe we can look at running another webinar on how to do email well uh, my husband is in third-party logistics meaning that uh, his business or warehouses and ships individual online orders. And he says that his customers are successful because of their large and engaged mailing email lists. So um, it's really important and we'll talk about it later. Um, customers on Facebook can leave testimonials about your business. Um, so obviously Google Local pages can also do testimonials. However, with Facebook, I see it as a little bit more genuine because usually you, you can't really fake. Look, you can have fake profiles on Facebook, but generally people that are leaving like um, feedback on Facebook are committed to that feedback. They're not sort of pretending to write a fake review for the sake of, you know, undermining their competitors or promoting a friend. So to some extent, it is a better way. I know Google is apparently going to dr looking at at least dropping their um, rating and review system because it's starting to be quite unreliable. So Facebook might be the way to go being a directory listing. Um, it's it's okay, an okay alternative for a website. So if you don't want to have one, can't have one, whatever, then if you have a Facebook listing, at least people can find you online and you can update them about your business that way. Uh, of course, Facebook is now great for targeted advertising. Um, basically, it knows its users inside out what they're clicking on, what their preferences are. So they will always show them the ads that people are interested in. Um, it's great for creating communities. So if your product is relevant to various topics, for example, um, you know, healthcare, you know, healthy living or food lovers, things like that, there's existing communities or you can create community around that topic. Facebook also has a marketplace, which is essentially like, an, uh, for lack of a better word, an eBay. Um, where you can list products to sell. It's mainly secondhand, but there is actually a lot of opportunity to send to sell new products there as well. Facebook currently is not charging a fee to list on uh, Facebook Marketplace, which is a good thing. So if you do have product that's conducive to, um, you know, sort of marketplace type selling, which yes, most of you do, but obviously you can't really smell, sell, I guess, gelato so well on the marketplace. But in most goods, um, you can you could play around with listing it on marketplace and it's a good place for cross promotion. So you could partner with other businesses and promote to each other's fans by tagging, you know, tagging each other or sharing each other's content. 
why use Instagram? It's a great visual branding, uh, brand building tool. So if you, all brands should have their own unique personality and this is the way you best illustrate your uh, business's personality. However, keeping in mind that potentially not all your customers are on Instagram. So you are uh, channeling the brand personality that's most likely to buy from you using this channel. So if an 80 year old, well, if 80 year olds are a common customer, they're not likely to be on Instagram. So you're not going to be showing that side of your brand or business personality on Instagram because mainly the users um, in that on Instagram are, you know, say under 50 or whatever is the, the most common demographic. Um, Instagram is a great way to stay connected with fans. Um, it's easy to market through images and videos. Of course, targeted paid advertising is, uh, it's the same, they're connected. So if you want to run ads on Facebook, you could uh, tick a box and it also runs them on Instagram. Um, and obviously, uh, there's the opportunity of individual celebrities. So you can use Instagram celebrities to hopefully sell your product. But there's also potential for you to create individual celebrity around yourself if you're that way inclined. All the other platforms, there's millions, but the most common ones, obviously, Madeline said YouTube. Um, there's TikTok, which is a really new one, which I, to myself, said I don't want to get involved with this, but it's becoming really popular. So I think I'm going to have to try to get an understanding of it. It's basically a, a video, a sort of a individuals can create funny, miming, dancing type video. <laughs> I, I, I'm still struggling to see why anyone is interested in it, but obviously there's, there's stranger things out there. Snapchat is quite a teen young person um, app where you just send snaps to each other and they disappear. Um, again, I think that's losing popular, popularity because Instagram is taken a lot of its features. Pinterest is one, LinkedIn, Twitter, again, we're not covering them, but for your individual strategies, some of these might be really relevant. So once we do our little uh, either one-on-one -on -one or group mentoring sessions, we can touch on those um, where relevant. One second, we have been, oh, there we go. Um, so I just want to highlight the purpose. So a lot of people, because it sounds like, you know, social media is the hype and you have to be on social media and, oh, my God, you know, that's where it all is. So it's important to understand that it's a combination of many things that benefit your business. It's not just sales. So a lot of people get frustrated that they spend all this time on social media and they don't see results. So obviously results is really important and why you would bother, but to some extent, it's like, um, you know, any other marketing that you do that you need to do in order to be seen by somebody, but you don't know what result is going to have. Like, for example, if you were to do a letterbox drop, um, you don't know how many people actually noticed it, how many will come as a result of it. They may mention it, they may not. So you could be spending all this money doing letterbox drops and you don't know what the impact is. In the same way, you could be spending time on social media doing all the right things and it's you're just not sure what the impact is. You might have lots of followers, you might have lots of likes, but you're like, how is this translating? And again, I'm not going to touch on uh, return on investment and measuring matrix in this presentation. It's too soon and it's quite complex and it is a science. Um, and there's big companies, you know, really looking at the data around engagement to try to generate more sales. Obviously, for a small business, that's not possible. Um, but, you know, you have to keep in mind that your commitment to social media is not just product promotion. You know, it's, it is about building your brand identity and just keeping in touch with fans and reaching new fans and building a community around your business um, or your product. So, all of those are an equal weighting. So it's not just sales and product promotion. And the people that just focus on that in their on their pages usually don't have that much engagement or follow through because no one really wants to be sold to. You know, they might like something visually and they like the, you know, might buy that product because they liked it and they've seen it, but they don't want to see just uh, like a showcase of your catalogue 
in their uh, private Instagram. It's just not how it works. So just t briefly touching on terminology, anyone that's got any uh, social media experience, this will be very basic, but for those that don't, I'll cover it. So page likes. Um, so whether it's Instagram or Facebook, you know, it's often referred to page likes or followers or fans. So it's your business page. How many followers does it have? How many people like it? So in, um, on Instagram, it's quite important. Um, it's called the vanity matrix. So often people will have a look at a page and decide whether they want to follow it on or not by how my, how popular it already is which sometimes makes it difficult for new pages to get followers because people don't want to follow a page that's not being followed. It's sad, but true. Um, with Facebook, Facebook's really taken uh, down the number. You, like, you really would struggle to find how many people on Facebook follow that page. But overall, it's actually quite hard to find pages these days. Like I, I was having a look to see if I could show you uh, what business pages look like on Facebook and I on my app I cannot find where the list of the pages that I follow is that's how much they want you to just pay for advertising and not engage with your followers for free post likes different to page likes post likes is in the individual post so when you post a picture a video whatever comment uh, people can like it um, on Facebook, they allow more emotions now, like a laugh, little laughing face or a sad face or a love face. So it, um, it gives you opportunity to see, you know, to what extent um, your followers are emotionally engaged with it rather than just a heart or a like. Um, comments, obviously on each post you can um, leave comments. This is where it starts to appeal to Obviously, post likes appeal to the algorithms on Instagram and Facebook that measure, um, you know, how, how engaging the post is. So then they're more likely to show it in other people's feeds. Um, the more comments there are, the, obviously likes first, then comments are heavier weighted and then shares. So once the, share, like the shares are really popular, that's when it becomes what's called viral. Um, so in the perfect world, you you want your content to go viral because you'll be exposed to as many people through people sharing it and hopefully people follow your, follow your page. Now, how do you go viral? That's not like a question really that is easy to determine. A lot of it is fluke. I have friends in with, you know, could create videos and digital marketing content and they've had clients come to them and say, can you make my video viral? And they're like, it's just not how it works. So, so you want to get as many shares as possible, but there's no formula to it. So it, again, it depends on the post. It depends on your product. It depends on how clever, whatever your posting is. It depends on how many followers you have that want to share it. So precise, imprecise science. Um, so just more terminology. So organic, when we're saying organic, it just means unpaid posts and followers. So basically people that choose to just follow you just by seeing your posts that you do on your page that you haven't paid for. Sponsored posts are paid advertising. So if you look at your feeds, you'll see some uh, labeled as sponsored, which means it's a paid ad. Often it's camouflaged as another post. So you can kind of feel like you're just seeing a feed of things you're interested in as opposed to advertising in your face. Um, promoted means um, similar to sponsored, but if you, so ads and um, posts can be quite different in their, um, how they're structured. So an ad would be really specifically structured, structured as an ad, whereas a post could be something like, hey guys, we're having the 20% off sale, come and visit us today and mention Facebook. Um, that would not be an ad, but you can pay to boost it so your followers can see it, but you can also expand the demographic of who is seeing it. So it's it, they're slightly different. Um, generally, I don't recommend uh, promoting posts. They don't tend to have very good um, outcomes, but there is a purpose for them sometimes. And fake, obviously, as the word says, it's fake followers, fake likes, fake comments. Um, all of it can be purchased for obviously the purpose of vanity and appearance of success. So 
uh, with, it's a very contentious issue whether it should be done or not. Obviously, uh, self, um, Instagram and Facebook, no. Uh, usually, it's, it's too obvious. You know, people will get thousands of followers in, in a matter of hours. Um, so you're not going to get rewarded by being shown to actual people. However, if you are struggling to get uh, followers because you don't have many followers, then sometimes it's kind of like boosting uh, you, just at a glance, you make yourself look a bit more popular just to then start getting those organic followers. Again, some people would go black and blue in the face saying don't do it. Others say, look, sometimes, you know, and just a thousand boost of followers um, is, um, you know, uh, helps a brand to, to get some traction. Now, the, um, th this is where the fake is an issue is when um, someone runs an ad and the comments start to appear like, oh, my God, this is the most amazing product. Uh, oh my God, I've bought so many of these and I just keep buying it. So you can actually pay for an ad and then pay for commentary <laughs> to to make it look like it's either legit or better than what it is. Um, obviously, some people clue into it. Many won't. Unfortunately, even if you do know that there's a lot of fakery on uh, social media, you still kind of fall for it. You know, it's sort of like... Um, how can I say, um, plastic surgery, <laughs> like you, you know, at a, at a distance, you might see someone go, oh, they look great. And then you have a closer look and you know that their, their face isn't very real. <laughs> so, so, and, but why do people get it to make themselves feel better about themselves? So that's, um, that's a little bit about fake followers, but yes, um, there's, if you wanted to do it, you can just Google buy likes, buy followers, and there's, millions of agencies and it could be like ten dollars to buy a thousand so it's not overly expensive again not endorsing it just explaining it um so anatomy of a facebook app so i've done some screenshots here but hopefully my technology will not fail us here and i can show you some things live like what my post looks or my um my thing looks like so i can quickly explain as we go, excuse this little window just enables me to be able to show you my phone. Um, so essentially, there we go. So this is when you open a f the Facebook app on a phone. At the top we see here, let me just make sure you guys are seeing this. Character. So this is where you would post. So this is a personal one. We'll touch on the business one too, but just quickly so you know what all the bits are. This is um, where you would write um, what you want to say, you know, um, hello, having a good day, whatever it is. And then you would post for people to see and like. So just to show you here, this is my notifications. Um, and today I posted a photo of my child. She's nine months old. And so now I'm getting lots of engagement. I've got 29 likes and quite a number of comments there. So the, the little bell goes off whenever there is, um, you know, people liking what you've said, but also um, um, if you're following a page or there's some sort of notification to something you're interested in, it all appears here. Uh, let me just see if there's any other notifications. So, um, so you can see here, I'm engaged with some Queen Victoria market traders. So it's notified me that there's a post where they've been tagged. So, you know, and there's like babyology is a page I follow. So they're doing a live post. So it's letting me know if I want to watch that. Um, the back to the home. So the home is where the general feed is. So up here is Facebook stories. I'm not going to go into stories today. Next lesson. Um, it's a new feature that basically lets you put up videos or pictures that disappear within 24 hours and are not permanently attached to your profile. Um, so then um, this is obviously an article from a kind of more like a media outlet about babies. <laughs> Why do babies vomit? I actually need to know this. Um, then uh, we've got um, sponsored. Here we go. So this is a sponsored post by Canva. 
Canva is a software that I'm actually using to do this presentation. So they know that I've been to their website today um, and the little magic at the back happens and goes, hey, you need Canva. Uh, so this is probably wasteful for them because I'm already a user. But obviously the way the systems work, um, they don't quite know if I've purchased from them or if they just need to remind me that I've been to their website. And then obviously there's random organic posts. And I just want to show you another ad. So there's another sponsored ad. Um, so this is, um, yeah, so a, a Instagram growth strategy. So Facebook knows that I've been doing research and I'm clicking on all these things. Um, so I'm getting a lot of courses. So if you are interested in um, get, you know, there's so many online courses that cost, you know, for anywhere from $50 to a thousand that you can do that someone walks you, walks you through the strategies Hang on a second. Um, so once you start clicking on this kind of stuff, if you have an account or create an account, it will give you more of that. And let's just find another one that's not my contacts posting random stuff. Oh, yeah. So here's another. Yeah. Okay. Grow your business, another education center. Because I do click on them because sometimes they offer free webinars and then I listen in just to make sure that I'm uh, not missing any valuable critical new information so free webinars is actually a good way to obviously get some insight and then you can choose whether you want to continue paying for the service or not um, just to go to this little menu here that is uh, videos so this just is a feed of videos so it's like watching a tv channel and random stuff comes up probably within your areas of interest but i usually find and there's again there's a sponsored ad there um, so ads are tucked in everywhere, but they kind of feel like they're part of what you want to look at anyway. This little house here is the marketplace. So here you can see, it's probably suggesting things related to what I may have clicked before. So these ones are actually, as you can see, like this, this is a bed. So um, sometimes actual businesses will advertise otherwise it will be people selling their old stuff this one is actually a really good example this is a plant business like a nursery and they just it's in, like the owner there just post things on marketplace all the time but just really nice pictures and I click on them all the time because I like the look of them and so I keep getting them in my marketplace feed now this other little thing here is groups so this is you can follow all sorts of groups that are of interest. For example, Port Melbourne families, I live in Port Melbourne. And that's a really great group of talking about all Port Melbourne related uh, issues and things like that. So you could potentially start a group for your product or join the millions of groups that are available that you can sell your product through. As an example, I know, let me just go back a bit. So there are all these various groups that I have, but I'm going to show you one that might be relevant for most of you. So I'm in like 41 groups. Um, let me just, yeah, babies talk, well, well, that's not, there's selling groups. So for example, let me, where are they all? Melbourne buy, sell, trade, anything. So there's, you can see 59,000 members. So in Melbourne, wanting to sell, buy or trade anything. And these are all the people that I know that are part of this group. And so you can actually post, usually again, it's, um, or, well, they, well, they've closed for now, but there's millions of these types of groups and you can actually just post your product and see, um, see if someone wants to buy it. So I've seen people uh, posting things like um, grazing platters. So if you're like a deli, for example, you, you would never think to advertise for these types of things, but you can actually post, if you're happy to deliver grazing platters, um, you can identify either a Melbourne group or even one closer within your po postcode like Port Melbourne, um, where you can promote your product. So um, in Port Melbourne uh, families, a lot of local restaurants that are obviously suffering at the moment have been doing promotion and everybody's been really supportive. So you can actually find your local group either where you live or near QVM, I guess, if your uh, produce are there, um, and uh, basically market that way. Um, 
so then we have, yeah, we've talked about notifications and there's a menu with a bunch of other stuff, which I won't go through today, but that just gives you a rough understanding of what the main features on Facebook are. So now I'm going to quickly just go and show you Facebook pages. So this is Facebook pages. So this is where if you have a business page to manage, you do it through here. So you, I'll click, if I click up here, this is the menu and this is all the pages that I've ever had access to that I can update. Sorry, I have a time limit set on my social media because I spend too much time on it. Obviously today I've got a good excuse, but an hour a day. I don't know the last time I've actually stuck to my hour, but anyway, I, I, I say it's for work. So anyway, so this is... Um, so in essentials, you know, as one of the traders, so I've sort of been involved with some students and am helping with posting. Um, so again, we're just not looking really, you can see how many likes your page has there. Um, you can also invite friends. Uh, this is the, obviously the main uh, feed. So that you can follow other, oh no, this is what you are posting. Then this bit here is, um, statistics so post engagements meaning how many people have engaged with your post obviously it's up 47 percent how many new likes you've got in the last 28 days um you, you, know, you can create posts from here you can create an event um story insights i guess oh yeah if you're posting in stories which i'm not touching on today but you can get all the insights about the page engagement here now, this little thing here is your notifications, I believe. I oh, know your messages. We won't look at messages. There are your notifications. So um, you can see Henry Pop of Cards tagged inner essentials. We can actually have a look at this post. Um, this is just a collaboration done by some students of a few traders. So you can get together with other traders. So obviously, Henry Pop of Cards followers saw this. Um, Inner Essentials can share it now and Inner Essentials followers can share, uh, uh, can have a look. And so all these uh, businesses are getting cross promotion. So that's what I mean by cross promotion. And this little thing down here is appointments. So you can actually book appointments on Facebook if you want, like if you do massage, like Inner Essentials um, or whatever might be relevant. And this little one at the end here is all the other um, admin uh, to run your page. So just an important one to note, in settings at the top here, if you want someone to help you manage your page, you need to go to settings and then you go to something. Hmm. Edit page roles. It's always difficult to find. Um, but if you want to give someone access, admin access, you go to this bit here and then you enter their name and you give them permission to be able to update your page as well. With Instagram, you would just share the login details. So that's the pages. Let's go back to our little presentation. Um, now, in Instagram, let's have a quick look at Instagram. Again, I know. So um, Instagram, similar in a way, I guess they're owned by the same company now. So at the top here, we've got, um, I'll just go to back to the live version. So at night, it's black for me and during the day, it's white. So stories are up here. Again, videos, maybe I'll pick one um, that might be not a personal one to share. Oh, let's just do it. All right, we've got Tam Jewelry, also QVM Trader, that has shared this uh, post as well, the collaboration. So again, then we can follow um, and click on the others featured. So hopefully everybody's exposed to each other's followers as well. This is a sponsored story. So ads amongst this as well. Again, keeping you away from stories at the moment because there's uh, too much to discuss. So this is a page I just follow. So biopackaging, I'm just interested in biopackaging. So this is one where, I mean, for someone that sells just packaging, they're doing pretty well. They've got 11,000 followers. Um, they do follow quite a large number. So it, uh, it's a strategy to get more followers if you follow more people. Um, 
But yeah, so I think they do quite a good job. See, grid. So again, the, when you're creating content on Instagram, fundamentally what's really important is what's called the grid. Because as you can see, when I'm looking at the page, I saw the individual post, but if I want to know more about your business, I am um, going to click through and all I see is this grid. And this grid is what attracts the eye and shows how professional or how, you know, uh, if the look of the business appeals to me. Um, this is what a lot of small businesses struggle with, to get the look of this grid right. And look, I've seen some businesses that don't follow these types of um, aesthetic rules, I would say, um, that can still do well. But as a general rule of thumb, your grid is super important. Anyway, we'll go back to just my feed, just so I can show you again. Sponsored posts. So pretty much, you know, you get one organic, one sponsored these days, nail polishes. Um, the ads have a different purpose. Some will take you to the store. This one's taking you to the Instagram profile because obviously they're trying to get more followers. So there's different strategies with the paid advertising. So let's just have a quick look. So that's, look, again, the grid. Like, the you know, it's neat and tidy. It's consistent. You get the whole brand picture. It's clean. You know, that's what they're all about. Clean and pleasant on the eye. 52,000 followers. Um now let's have a quick look. Then I've got general interest like business chicks is a business group that inspires you to do stuff. Obviously baby things. Anyway, so let's just find one more ad. Jewelry, um, custom things. I often click on custom jewelry things because I have a few jewelry cu customers, but I also like the way they look. So I get a lot of jewelry. So whatever you click on, if you enter cars, you'll get cars, that type of thing. Um, I think that'll be it. So then we're going back down the bottom here. So this is search. So where's this feed is everybody that I pretty much follow. So the house is home What and everybody that I follow, excluding the ads, this uh, magnifying glass is giving me popular posts or posts that are within my interest area. Um, so then I might be interested in following someone else or liking this content. So let me just find something. Obviously, it's a lot of babies and hair at the moment. I'm, I have been looking at get, going to the hairdresser. So as you can see, there's a lot of hair options here for me. Um, but say, for example, I don't have many products listed here, but this is where you would use these hashtags, which I'd explain later. But last night I was having a look to see what comes up for some of you that I saw register. So if I'd go to hashtag salami, there is basically a pool of salami posts and there's salami videos and salami photos and grazing platters and things like that. So if, say, for example, if I'm really into salami and something catches my eye, let me just have a look. Okay. We'll go back to the top. I think there, this one. So um, this is someone in San Francisco. So it's a nutritionist. So, they obviously a uh, nutrition consultant, so I'll have a look. They're very popular, obviously, um, 383,000. Again, some of them could be purchased, but um, you, you'll look, there's software that will tell you how many are real and fake, and it's especially relevant when you're following an in look, If you're going to pay someone to promote uh, your product, you want to know that their uh, followers are real, um, whereas in this type of case, it doesn't really matter too much if you just like what they're suggesting. So um, obviously, this is not a product like a well. Her product is a service essentially. She's not selling salami plates, but maybe there'll be something. Let's have a look. Um, this is in Alberta. So again, these hashtags. It just depends. If I go to salami Melbourne, for example just to see what happens. So if you don't have an account yet, uh, you could create one and go and have a look to see what comes up for your areas of interest. If you have an account, go and do that too. So allow me Melbourne. So this is a very niche um, post, right? So, um, well, niche hashtag. So there's going to be limited, like there's only 100 posts as opposed to 700 and whatever thousand. Um, so I can then see, look, this consistently someone's posting about salami here. 
So this is a business um, that does, no, it's a, a person. It's a person or cook or something. I can't even understand what they do, but again, good amount of followers. Anyway, so basically you're trying to, through this, you're trying to attract people that are interested in the areas, um, the product areas that you can offer by putting these hashtags onto your um, posts. I'll go into that briefly in a second, but again, how to use them for your advantage will come later. Let me just go back to my slides. Okay, so um, we've covered ads. Oh, yeah, posting. So I won't, like, so if you want to post, to post a picture, then you can do the hashtags. And again, I typed in happy baby, and there is happy 8.4 million happy baby photos. So if you're into happy babies, you'll be in heaven, and then you might find some pages you want to follow from that. So just to really illustrate, sorry, I skipped through, um, illustrate what um, hashtags really are. The best way I think to explain it, it's like a filing cabinet. So if I asked you to all take a photo of a co your morning coffee, um, rather than all kind of me trying to figure out where all your morning coffee photos are, if you put a hashtag morning coffee onto the photo, then all I have to do is just go to that file, morning coffee file, and I can see all the different photos that you've taken of your morning coffee. So a hashtag is fundamentally a folder. And so the more broad the folder, like hashtag baby, obviously everybody that has a baby that wants their photo in this folder, there'll be millions. Mel Salami Melbourne, not that many people, you know, there's a folder of people posting salami pictures in Melbourne. So that's, I think that's the clearest way to explain what a hashtag is and there's strategies around how to use them. We're not going into them today. Um, so the, so basically what are the benefits of using social media? For most businesses, social media is the most effective way to reach and connect with customers because there's, again, no, you don't have to speak to journalists, you don't have to print flyers, you don't have to pay for billboards. Um, so as a result, it's actually comparatively low cost and it's more measurable than other mediums. As I showed you, say in the Facebook pages um, and Instagram is the same, you can get insights on your engagement and how well your posts are working and if anybody's clicking through to um, uh, to your website from it. Um, the, as I said, no barriers to entry. Anyone can start with a social media account. You ha basically have full control of it other than, again, giving your product to a PR agency, for example, that then distributes it to their contacts and you have no idea where it's going and what's being said about it. Um, it's your opportunity to be creative. So though both platforms have rules of engagement, I would call it, um, there's always new trends coming through. So you might, it's ideally you can do what's working well, you know, especially with the greed, greed things. But at the same time, um, you can create your own variant of content as long as it's clever and well done. Um, you can engage your customers to share images of your product that you can then share. So uh, they create the content for you. Um, also, the benefit of Google pages, sorry, Facebook pages is that it comes up in Google searches. So uh, if you don't have a website, again, that's a good option. Otherwise, if someone's researching your business, um, they will find your Facebook page quite easily. And obviously, there's collective benefits like uh, QVM businesses where you can cross promote like I showed you um, easily that way. So obviously, within the market, you can't give each other, you know, your customers flyers for other businesses, it just wouldn't work. Whereas on social media, you can quickly and easily promote, you know, to similar businesses that have the similar not similar businesses, but more people that have the same buyer as you would. Um, so the question is, do you need to have a website to benefit from social media? And the answer is, of course, yes and no. So yes, because um, you can more likely convert sales, especially if you've got an online store, your product is conducive to an online store. But if you can't have one, don't want one, whatever the reason is, social media can still be your digital presence. You just 
may not see the return um, on your efforts on social media just as easily as if you had an online store. Um, obviously, websites make it easier to close sales. And if you're not then getting online sales, you can ask yourself what's wrong with your website or what's wrong with your product. And this is where in a mentoring session, we talk about the four P's, which is product price, place and promotion. So if your product is not selling, theoretically one of these, and look, there's seven P's and you can evolve it more, but there's either something wrong with your price, something wrong with your product, something wrong with your place, which is where you're located, or something wrong with your promotion. So if, uh, you know, if something's not selling, look at all these things and see what you can fix. Um, and yes, as I said, social media can serve as your website if it must. Uh, next, hang on a second, there we go. So the challenges. Um, so overall, social media is not the holy grail. It does appear to be so because everybody's talking about it, but it's not that easy and it's getting harder and harder. So again, it's, you almost need a bit of an X, X factor, like a popular, you know, the cool kids at school, some are cool, some are not, and there's no particular reason to why. Unfortunately, that sort of does apply to social media. Some just get it, some just nail it, some do the right things that people like. You know, this is kind of a new frontier. So the, the rules are evolving and whoever got it right in the first place created those rules. So there's it's limitless but very limited at the same time um so you have to play by the platform rules and user preferences to some extent to succeed um need to be user to understand how it really works like if you're not if you don't have an account um and you've never logged in and you're not engaging you probably will struggle to ever use it effectively at the end of the day it's you know um it it would lies with anything. Um, you need to be creative and capable at creating your own brand content, or you need to have funds to outsource to create it. And that could cost, you know, $3,000 a month to do it to, in some instances. Um, so now um, I've just realized, is it 4.30, Madeline? Madeline? Oh, sorry, I muted myself. Oh, sorry. What time is it? It is 4.30. Oh, goodness. All right. Well, I think I, like I re I'm talking too much and I wanted to show you more. So I'll just finish with the slides. Unfortunately, we won't have time for um, too many more examples today, but we I can uh, leave some time in the next presentation for it. Um, so one other point is poorly managed accounts are worse than having nothing at all. So pretty much if you can't do this kind of content, you need to just have a uh, basically a directory listing type page and leave it at that. Um, and yes, it's important to note that advertising posts and organic posts do look different. Facebook limitations are um, so limited organic exposure. So you pretty much have to pay to be seen. Um, you relying on your network to grow your fan base. So it's really hard to actually get strangers to follow you on Facebook these days. And I think it's better for services and not so much for products. Um, basically limitations with Instagram is it's uh, the curation makes it quite difficult. So I've showed you some before and after pictures of what a page looked like before that wasn't getting engagement and how it got curated to look after. So it's all about the visual grid of it, um, mixed with product shots and lifestyle shots and quotes and inspiration and what your brand is all about, not just your products. Um, it is a bit of a uh, popularity contest and you can spend a lot of time creating all this content, which then basically flashes up for a moment in front of your followers eyes and disappears. So they are some of the limitations. Um, now, one second, my computer is, needs charging. Um, so touching on content creation. So basically anything, photos, visual text, content is a popular word at the moment. It's basically anything you can post on your digital marketing channels. Um, it does not have to be professional, but uh, it has to sort of be consistent um, and related to your brand identity. 
Um, sharing others content can strengthen your brand so if you're struggling to create your own content enough of it or to create the visual story you can actually follow say bloggers for example that if you sell hats as an example and you don't have enough product photography you can follow other uh, people that wear hats or you probably wouldn't post other your competitors things on your website but people that um, either using your product or have shared your product or have similar product, um, you can uh, use their images and post them on your social media channels. So smartphones are perfect to create all this and there's also various apps and filters that help you make it more professional. So what works, uh, and I know that most of you came to this presentation probably hoping to get an answer from this, and the answer is it depends. It depends on what, um, what your goals are, whether it's foot traffic, website sales, bigger contact lists, more followers, all of this. Um, it depends on your capabilities. So do you, can you create your own content or do you need to um, get someone else to do it and is creating content the best way to spend your time all these questions have to be answered before you you can start determining what will work for you um, and obviously what's your budget if you answer no to these then you need to spend some money to hire a person or an agency or learn how to do it um, by yourself and um, i did want to go through again the individual cases but basically looking at everybody that uh was, joined or uh, at least registered for this presentation i looked at all your product categories and basically listed it from easiest to hardest um to market sort of in this scale um basically anything that's a no-brainer purchase cheap useful nice to have inspiration is easier to get conversion on and then it progressively gets harder to purpose items um, that are more an, an experience. So um, again, I wanted to go into more than that in detail, but we can do that in the individual uh, group mentoring sessions or whatever we do after this. Um, so I, if homework, I want you to create an account if you don't have one. When you're creating an account, it will ask you to select your areas of interest. Um, and so you can follow roughly what you like. Um, it will start giving you relevant content and see what people are doing that are really good, uh, what you, what's attracting your eye, why do you think it's working, analyze it for yourself. Click on ads that are shown to you because you'll get more of the same ads and then you can save. There's like a little save button, we, we can discuss that later. Um, save them to basically, if they're making you want to buy, then you might be able to imitate that later down the track. And you can also identify what your competitors are doing um, and save them for future reference as well. So, um, and thank you. Um, but you've seen on the email what the next lesson will contain. I'll probably leave more room to look at individual case studies because I really have saved a lot of examples to explain things. Um, but now we'll maybe, obviously if you have to go, please go, but I'm happy to answer a few questions now. It's, thanks, Katja. Um, now I have a quick question. Yep. I just want to know, when you were looking at the Instagram page, there's a little bit at the top that says um, follow message or email. Where does that message go and where does the email go? Um, so it would be in the settings. Um, so is something within Instagram or is it like a personal thing separate to Instagram? So... Um, so are you in reference to your business page or a let business me, page, a business yeah, page. Hold on. let me just go back to my Instagram. So if you mean, if we go to an individual page, uh, they're hi, DM echo bags. There you are. I think you're on this call. You've just randomly appeared in my feed. Um, all right. So let's have a look. So if we go to a business page, let's go to this advertising. Okay. Yeah. So the message will go, um, so follow, obviously you can follow a page. The message will go into the little inbox. So right. up here, it, um, this little, um, thingy here, like a little, what is it? Like a paper plane is your inbox. So you can communicate directly with these pages, businesses or people via, uh, messages. Um, and it got, basically it will be a notification, like a little star there that says you've got a message. 
Uh, if we go back again to, um, so yeah, email or contact would be their details. So my phone messaging email system automatically opens up because they've put their email in it. But when you're setting up your page, there'd be um, an option to do that. And okay. I think a few other options. Oh yeah, if you click down here, so when you're selecting people you might want to follow, like your competitors and so forth, um, if you click this little arrow here, it yeah. gives you option of similar businesses. So for example, if you wanted to follow like fashion clothing or whatever it might be, it will give you what Instagram deems is people or businesses in that genre and that you can go and have a look at and follow if you want to as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. Thank you. Any other questions? I do have another one, but I don't want to be greedy with everyone's time. It seems like, um, well, people can drop out if they want to. And otherwise, it seems like, you know, there's not enough questions coming in to worry. So please go ahead. All right. Um, so, you know, to make the grid look beautiful and all the rest of it, obviously there's like, is there standard sizes that you should be making the images before you post them? Like I'm worried about posting something and then the app makes it too long or... No. So Instagram puts everything in a square. I okay. just find one like so this is a fashion brand this is their grid so um yeah it's basically always a square so all you need to worry so for example if we're looking at this dress it could have been a full length picture but it's cropped it automatically to a square so okay. now there is apps there's actual apps that can help you plan your posts um to to so you can see what the grid is going to look like in advance mm -hmm. um so say if you've got like six images you want to post you can actually put them in this app and it, like drag and drop them and go oh, this is the best for my grid oh okay. yeah and do you recommend a particular one or are there like a million of them there's a million of them but i do plan to go in to apps in the next um oh, cool. one or two sessions so fair enough cool. yeah. there's like millions yeah so obviously i went over time already just covering the basics so yeah. <laughs> um we'll try yeah for next time cool oh well that's all my questions thank yeah, you good. no worries any other hey, one thanks oh, yeah. jenny no worries. any okay. other questions at this stage if you'd like to unmute yourself. Um, I think, look, unless, if you're struggling to unmute yourself, then maybe type in the box to oh. unmute yourself. Otherwise, we'll end it here. Uh, one, one question. Oh, I've got one yeah. question. Yeah. Um, you said to create an account as homework. Uh, are, are you talking about a Facebook account or Instagram account or? Both. I, I would probably recommend that you focus at the moment if you don't have accounts on yep. Instagram. It's just an easier tool these days for marketing. Yep. Um, and that way you can start kind of going around and figuring out what is actually going on and how it all kind of interrelates. Um, and then if you, do, if you don't have personal Facebook, then please go ahead and do personal Facebook in the same way. I wouldn't recommend starting a business page just yet because obviously you need to put a bit of information about your business on there. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. All right. So, yeah, I did have some examples based on who registered um, on what other people are doing. But I think, again, if you... Um, would care to join in one of the future sessions we'll probably look at that more closely later okay because yeah we've definitely run out all of right look thank you Katja um great presentation lots of um information there uh, I, I guess a couple of the key things are that um you use your social media as a promotional tool and it's all about engagement and building your profile uh, it's not just about sales and and um, and and your product promotion. Exactly, exactly. So I just noticed too that on Facebook there's um, a new uh, care emoji as well that gives a hug, which is oh. cute. Oh, 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 there's my grandma skyping from Russia. Excuse me. <laughs> I bet I'll hang up on her now. But yeah, so I guess it's time to go. But if you have any feedback, would like to know more, if you were confused about anything, please let Madeline know and I'm happy to answer more questions. If any of you would like to be included in a group mentoring session,
um, particularly on setting up uh, 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 the Facebook page or Instagram page. Or like individual strategies. Or individual strategies, yes. Just let us, yeah. It would yeah be just let me know. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank oh, and Madeline will send my presentation slides out in case it helps. Yep. All right. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye now. Bye.